another D-Link video. Today I have invited the wonderful Alan back to this fabulous flat so he can talk about all the things that are going to make your working from home experience much better and easier. Um, we know that at least 50% of people are trying to work like this now and often they don't have the environment around them to make them productive and to make it healthy and safe for, the, for their bodies and minds. So, Alan's going to talk to us a little bit more about what he's going to do and how he's going to help. Yeah, there's, uh, there's plenty of guides out there for people who have the perfect office space, uh, people who have a desk, people who have an ergonomic chair, but what if you just have two chairs and, like and, and, and a kitchen table in front of you? We're going to try to help you make the best of what isn't the most optimal situation with some helpful tips and tricks. I've brought some tools of the trade with me right. today. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. Not everything is made by dealing because we're trying to do a That's, bit more of a full set We can out. forgive you just this once. Okay, great. So what should we kick off with first? What well, would you say would be the most important thing that somebody would need to have? Number one? Yeah. Desk placement. Okay, let's talk about desk placement. When you, when you think about where you're going to place your desk, you, you've, you've got to have in your mind that you're going to be sat there for eight hours a day. Hopefully not constant, you're going to get up and have a walk and make yourself a cup yeah. of tea. Um, you don't want to be in a dank, dark kind of scenario. No. And, and also, one of the things that we tell people to think about when they're placing their desk is what's behind you might sound like some kind of a bad pantomime and there's some villain creeping up behind you with a fake knife. What but do you no, mean by this? Especially for uh, the, the likes of me, I'm on a lot of video calls mm. and mm. what's behind me is important because it's all shown on my web camera. Yeah. You expect it to have the camera on, yeah, you expect that's a good it to, point. To, to, to be there. So one of the things we think about with um, desk placement is get yourself some natural light rather than artificial because yeah. you're going to be there for a large part of the day. Yeah. And think about what's behind you if you have to go on. Um, yeah. Uh, calls yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, It doesn't look good if you're in a bedroom, mm. sitting on a bed and you basically cushions and uh, pictures and it basically does look like you're in a bed. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, just think about anything that could be deemed um, like inappropriate movies yeah. or, or stuff like yeah. that. Just, um, um, I, I have a, I have a, a canvas. I would know about that. that I, 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 just, just, just anything that, that could yeah. be thing that way. Yeah. I, I have a, I have a canvas up on my wall, but it's very inoffensive. It's, it's fine. A computer but yeah, I get what you're saying. You never know what people have on their walls. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Okay, great. So desk placement. Should we go through a few sort of basic tips or is that it? And that's, that's, that's pretty much it. Okay, um, great. With desk placement, but then the other part of your desk placement will be what you're sitting on. Oh God, yeah. And this is got, a major issue, isn't it? We've got some comfy chairs here today and they've got the added part of a nice, a nice are, cushion. They are comfortable, the but, but... Being comfortable and being ergonomic, being the correct, having the correct posture. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're sitting there, I can see that you're, 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 you're to pushing up. your shoulders back rather yeah. than having any sort of back support. But yeah. the issue is, Alan, is that these, and I know this from a personal point of view, mm. these work chairs are so big. Yeah, no, yeah. But and, and, and this is a problem because, frankly, I do not want one in my I, I, workspace. I totally understand. They take up way, way too much space. So what's the alternative? They, what's probably, the plan? they probably won't they fit even, under, exactly. un, un, under the chair. So they what, won't slide away. Well, the, the, there is really no alternative to that. You've, you've just got to keep yourself comfortable, keep your back in a, in, in, in a, in a good position. Yeah. But what we're going to talk about today, because we're not DSC trained, we're not health and safety people, um, we recommend you get a chair. They start on Amazon from about £40 all the way up to £200, yeah. pounds, no matter how much you spend. So they're, yeah. not, they're not particularly expensive. But what we're going to do is make sure that the stuff that's on your desk uh, in front of you is at the appropriate level for, for, for you to look and, at. And will that by sit. default almost make you sit properly? Yes. So if yes. you haven't got the right chair or you can't yes. afford to buy a chair yeah. or you haven't got the space, it will actually naturally just make you sit properly. Well, let's move on to the first section where we're talking about monitors yeah. and monitor risers. Okay, great. Yeah. So let's talk monitors. Alan, talk to us about how we should best place a monitor on our desk and how high it should be and just, I don't understand any of that. 
I couldn't bring my monitor with me today, unfortunately. Shame. It's no. very big, very large. I've got a 24 inch monitor at home. But mm. what I bought in its stead is my monitor riser. Ah, this um, is clever. So, so, so this is a little device that I bought from um, Amazon. It was, mm. it was about 14 pounds and I'm not gonna push any brands that they're gonna No, but, that's cheap. Um, but, it, but it's a cheap model. It's got adjustable feet on it. So, so these bits slide out and you can make the, the, it higher or lower as okay. per your requirements. Okay, great, so great. You can pull the bottom part out oh, and that's you can really put it in good. that way if oh. you require it to be higher. Oh. I'm going to leave it at this sort of base level right now. Okay. So the reason the reason for this, Soph, is if I pick up my laptop right now and I just put it on my desk and I'm obviously taller than you, that isn't me dunking on you, I'm just pointing out the fact that I am looking down. down. My neck is in an unnatural I position. I always, always look down at my laptop. Always look down. I'm always looking down, yeah. Neck pain? Shoulder pain? Sciatica, I think. Actually. It all it, it, it all radiates from poor spinal position while you're doing that. You shouldn't be. You should try to keep it on the sort of eye level. That feels like an effort. I know what you're saying, though. Well, that's where the monitor riser helps here. So if, um, if for instance, we just put this in front of you here. So if, you put, if we put the monitor riser there, so um, obviously this isn't the ideal setup we would have a monitor on the monitor riser but if we just put the laptop on the monitor riser there yeah automatically could you use this for your laptop too yes yeah, you could right it's, it's literally just is that are we have we got the right height here i mean that's a better height for you you're yeah. you're looking slightly downwards yeah. so but what actually you could then do, you could just put your screen back a bit well and also as i showed you at the start just me you make can it higher. Make the monitor rise even I feel higher. like any higher than that, that might be quite uncomfortable. But this feels like a nice height for my arms. Yeah, and if but then you're not going to have that height for your arms because your hands, you're using your keyboard separate to your monitor, right? Well, we'll move on to keyboard and mouse in just a second. Okay, cool. But what? what I'm, just before we move on, I was just going to mention that your average monitor for home would be about 21 to 24 inches. Which this is, is what? this is a 14 inch screen. Really, most so, people have bigger. Yeah, they do. Have so bigger. if you could imagine the monitor is on the stand, so it's gonna be higher. So it would literally be this that sort of shape here for you to look directly yeah. So you at. should be focused like straight ahead. As, as, as straight ahead as you can. So laptops actually, not always the best thing to be working on at home. Not really, you you really should if you can. And you can connect up a laptop to a monitor though, right? If you want yeah. to. Yeah, HDMI cable. Okay, um, stick it in and then you get, you put everything on your screen onto the monitor and just use the keyboard on your laptop, which you can or, then move down to here. Or a separate keyboard, which we also recommend because laptop keyboards aren't ergonomic. Oh. So, but that's a great natural progression for us to move on. Okay, so we're gonna talk about mice and, and monitors. Ma no, mouse, mouse, mice. Keyboards. Mice and keyboards. So basically we're gonna move okay. on to talk about USB connections. Okay. Uh, ultra modern laptops like Sophie's MacBook and other things like that don't have many connections. So if you wanna plug in a keyboard, mouse, etc., etc., the USB hub. You wouldn't be able to. It's a great. Ah, right, you wouldn't be able to without the USB hub. So basically going on from what I was saying about laptops and what they do have and don't have, this is my laptop and it only has one USB port, so I can't plug all my paraphernalia into it. It's really quite annoying. Um, but you have brought loads of stuff to show me, and I do believe that this is the dream accessory. Tell me about it, and what is it, and what does it do, and where do I plug it? The dream accessory. That's a bit. That's a bit much, but it's a very, very useful device. Okay. So. Well, that's a dream accessory to me. In, so. the, in, in the office, you will very often have a docking station, a professional docking station, like more, more of like a bigger black box. Right. Um, but those devices run into the 150, 200 pounds sort of stages. Right. Whereas one of our USB hubs is much more of a bargain in and around the 30 to 50 pounds sort of range. Okay. Much more portable. Um, so for instance, if you're traveling down a big docking station like that or a little device um, such as this, you can just easily fit that in your pocket or so in good. your laptop bag. And I've bought, got a plethora of devices in front of me, which are all devices that you would easily connect up with your docking station in the office, but you would very much struggle with Sophie's laptop, which only has one USB port. Uh -huh. so, um, for instance, I do a lot of calls. I also record webinars when I'm at home. So I have a, um, a separate mic, which needs a, a USB right. cord. 
We mentioned um, we mentioned earlier about keyboards and mice. So I've got my external um, corded mouse. I prefer corded mice to wireless mice because yeah. I do a lot of work on Photoshop. Yeah, okay. And then I've got my wireless keyboard. But even though my keyboard is wireless, you still need to have your receiver. So that receiver has to be plugged in oh. to the laptop to be able so to we're use the keyboard. So talking about one, two, three things already. That's three things already. Right. And then I've got a separate webcam, which, which I use at home, 4K webcam for recording the webinars, um, because the camera on my laptop not, not, not the best quality it's 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 not even 720p resolution Great. um so that's that's by the by so this is actually i mean these devices would be uh, like uh, uh, kind of obviously so, yeah the sort of devices you take for granted having yeah. in the office yeah um usb wi-fi 6 adapter okay so this will upgrade sophie's uh, macintosh to be able to take a wi-fi 6 signal Brilliant. another usb slot needed amazing usb pen drive what? Where am I going to plug this into my laptop if I need to transfer a file quickly uh, for, so, for me from the office, from wherever? So if, so, so if somebody's got these devices at the moment, mm. are they just trying, like, because I didn't know about this before, so would somebody be using just one or two at a time at the moment and awesome. then swapping them out? That's you, basically what they do. W without a hub, you'd have to. Yeah. And, and the one thing that we haven't even mentioned, so that everybody does, the first thing that everybody does when they get into the office, plug the phone in yeah ah. it's another usb slot taken up by plugging your phone in so and this so this one's got one two three right eight in total eight connections eight in connectors. total so actually i could do one two i've got yeah. three i've got three usbs i've got three usbs i've got i've got an hmi and i've got yeah. an sd and a couple of sds and ethernet and and, and an extra a, a usb c yeah, this is great. There. So you just plug it in like that. So there's there's three USB A's and one USB C. So you That's get back so good. the USB C slot that you used, um, and you get the three additional things to plug, whichever of these you want to choose. Hello, hello, testing, testing. I love it. I'm glad it's not on. I love it. Okay, brilliant. That's really helpful. And actually, it's genuinely really, really helpful. Yep. Um, I think so. Again, ha look at the space that we've taken up on the desk. <laughs> well, you don't have to have all of these things, but we strongly advise if, if, if you've got a couple of USB slots, get yourself an external mouse because yeah. trackpads, not particularly ergonomic and not particularly <coughs> precise. I'd use the word yeah. precise. Get yourself a wireless keyboard with a more ergonomic frame um, that you can have closer to you. Because if you've got the laptop at the prominent, uh, the best position for your eyesight, yeah. it's probably going to be further away from you and your keyboard should be closer to you when you're typing so, so that's like to use mm. yeah i mean i mm. could do that you could but then but this would be so much better but, right but then that would be that's a much more that natural that is very comfortable position. actually i have to say yeah i am gonna have to sort this out when i get home <laughs> i am gonna have to this is really good and of course for your mouse bring those mouse met out of retirement because there aren't enough people using mouse mats anymore. I miss, no. I miss the old mouse mats. Oh my God, get the mouse mats out. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Brilliant. Next. Wi-Fi. Oh God, let's talk about Wi-Fi. Okay. We Wi-Fi. Very, we, we very rarely talk about Wi-Fi here at D-Link. Very rarely. <laughs> let's talk about Wi-Fi. What do we need to understand when you're working from home? Well, going back to the very first part that we talked about with office placement, Sophie's environment here is very small. So uh, we, we know that the modem router is just outside of the shot of the camera there. So we yeah. know we're going to get a decent signal yeah. in, in a small place like this. Yeah. But Wi-Fi becomes very, very important in houses, um, in a large flat, in in just a, a, a bigger work environment. Yeah. So. For instance, you've got your router and modem downstairs. Yeah. You're in a three-story house, mm. and your office is on the top Upstairs. floor. Upstairs. Is it likely to be up there? Yeah, it could be, I guess. Probably. Well, most likely. I mean, if you're in yeah. a three-story house, the bottom floor is going to be your Kitchen living room. Yeah. The, the second floor will be one bedroom, and the yeah. bathroom, and the, the first, the, the third floor would be a single bedroom yeah. and a double bedroom. Yeah. So yeah. most likely, that's going to be where your space is, unless it's down on the ground floor, in which case you would probably be fine. Um, but when it comes to when it comes to desk placement, if you are up on the third floor and your modem and router is down on the first floor, you're not going to get a particularly good signal. And mm. the, the the word that we use all the time at D-Link is you know, Wi-Fi black spots. 
Yeah, so a Wi-Fi backspot is where the, the signal's just not making it to where you are. Yes. And that's because of distance, wall thickness, that kind of thing. I'm glad you're the expert, so. <laughs> okay, great. So your advice is to get closer to the modem or to get an extender or some kind of mesh system that will go across the house. What's the, what's the, what's the answer? Well, all, all of those are answers. Okay. Um, but the, the practicalities of relocating your office down to the first floor when you've got a lovely space set up on the, on the third floor, mm. uh, I, I would suggest leave that where it is. And um, if, if you've got the ideal space set up already, um, the best way the best way to check on your um, on your sort of speeds is to run a speed test downstairs. How do you do that? Uh, there's plenty of speed tests available. There's a Google yeah. speed test. Okay. There's one by Ookla. There's a few Great. others out there. Great. So so grab your phone. Make sure you're connected to the Wi-Fi. Run a speed test downstairs. Yeah. Go up to your office and run a speed test again. Up Great. There. there there are indicators on your laptop. Um, with the Wi-Fi signal. signal. Yes. So each one of those bars represents 25% of the signal. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Well, the, the, the problem is, <coughs> is that 20, 25% of the signal could mean 74 all the way down to 51. Okay. So they're a little bit misleading in terms right. of the actual Wi-Fi strength that you're getting. Okay, okay. And a speed test is much, much, much more reliable. Okay. So that's what we recommend. Okay, great, great. Okay, brilliant. So what do what do, what do people need to do about it? Well, I'm just gonna grab our new little uh, friend here. The best looking router on the market, people. Um, so this is the um, Aquila Pro M30. I'm just going to put it down. down put it down on there. Um, we talk about so uh, smart. We talk about mesh and extenders. Um, we talk about mesh. We talk about routers. We talk about extenders all the time, as yeah. we know. Router and an, ex and an extender is still a valid way to extend your internet. Yeah. A power line is still a valid way to um, extend your internet around your home, but it's not the most optimal solution. Okay, okay. A power line and a extender sets up a new SSID. And if you don't know what SID, SSIDs are, check our video on Wi-Fi jargon, which, which will be out on the channel. Basically, you're, you've got a whole new connection set up. So you might have seen it. So if you run a video call with your boss, you're down in, you're in your office, the kids come home, I'm going to go into the bedroom because it's quieter because the kids are streaming Netflix. You completely lose your signal walking through your home yeah. because you've shifted from one, one internet connection to the other. Or you have to physically shift it yourself, in which case you drop the call. Reconnect. Happens to me all the time. All the time. Mesh. Aquila Pro M30. One of these in a three-story house. You might want one on each floor in a two-story house, one on each floor in a flat. You might want one where your router comes in and then one extender in the bedroom, for instance, if you um, if that's where your office is or if you're a big streamer of um, TV in the bedroom, you want to watch a lot of stuff. Um, so the difference with mesh and the beauty of these M30 systems and the rest of the Aquila Pro system is that they all fit into the same ecosystem. Okay. So you can, you can buy the M30 or you can buy um, the upcoming extender or you can right. buy the N60 which will be this system's big brother yeah. and they can all work together, together in, in, in a tandem okay. and there will be seamless mesh just blanketed across your whole house. Oh, so you can, be on a, you can be on a video call on your laptop, you can walk upstairs and what these systems do is they seamlessly bypass you from this router, which is the route on the first floor, up to the router that's on the second floor. Total seamless transition. That's super, super clever. And then again, as you go up to the third floor, you get transmitted over to... It's also genius because, like me, I have a lot of video calls that go on for quite a long time. Yeah. And so often, I want to just go make myself a quick cup of tea. Perhaps I've done this presentation, then I'm listening to other people, so yep. I don't necessarily need to be on... Video, on audio, just audio. Or video yeah. Yeah, yeah so I can go like from upstairs or from one end of the house to another and not worry without about losing the connection no. that is absolutely brilliant yep god that's amazing okay great I love that that's that's I've learned a lot today yeah that's... I'm still learning this is crazy <laughs> I am still learning I love it but me mesh mesh is the best way to get get rid of wi-fi black spots without 
running Ethernet cables all over your house. I love That's this. a completely different video okay. um, that we'll probably do another day. And I just love this. All right. And this is available on Amazon, people. Yep. Be there, and, be there uh, or be square. Can be wall mounted as well for extra coolness. And used to hook some clothing and stuff on and there's there. There's two, two hooks on the, yeah. two hooks on the back there. So, so cool. Thank you, that is so, so helpful. Thanks, Alan. No problem. Now we're gonna talk about something I still don't really understand, but I'm pretending that I do. Um, we're gonna talk about 4G, we're gonna talk about 5G. And we're gonna talk about this cool little device here, which I'm trying to get Alan to give to me. Well, this video just took a turn. <laughs> okay, explain, so explain. For, um, for Sophie, who doesn't understand what 3G, 4G and 5G are. Uh, so basically, Wi-Fi is your home broadband connection. Yeah. But somehow, through the magic of the air, when yeah. you're out, you still get your emails. Yeah. That's because, That's of, because of 4G. 4G is ostensibly mobile internet. So, so your broadband is your fixed line internet at home. And then when you're out and about, it's your mobile broadband. Your mobile broadband is provided by 3G, 4G, or 5G signals. Yes, but but who cre who creates those signals? Um, the Vodafone, right? Exactly. It, Telecommunications EA, companies, exactly. All, all those other right, people, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so, yeah, so, so so 3G, 4G, 5G are all based on a series of masts. So yes. you'll see big masts over there. Yes. The broadcast signal. So. The reason that 3G is still on and it's going to be switched off eventually is that um, the same as with Wi-Fi signals, the faster the signal gets, the less distance it can be transmitted over. Right. So 4G has now uh, pro proliferated the whole of the country. Yeah. So we can afford to turn 3G off because we pretty much got 100% coverage of the United Kingdom. But uh, 4G. in some areas, like in Europe, I imagine, where it's more rustic and it isn't it hasn't got the, the infrastructure yep. they're still using 3g quite a lot and they're not even you know they're nowhere well, near 5g for example well they're not going to turn 3g off then no, like the uk exactly. is because uh, maybe in areas of, 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 of bulgaria maybe in areas of, of other eastern european countries there yeah. will be large wide expanses where, where that is true okay. but um, i mean it could be true in, in certain parts of wales but um it's 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 so at the moment, 4G in the UK is the standard, standard and it's yes. a pretty good standard. 4G is a pretty good standard. Okay. We've, um, uh, my, my speed at home is about 80, um, 80 megabits per second. Yeah. And I know people who have got faster speeds than that via really? 4G. Really? Okay. Uh, the, and so, so, so what they'll do is they'll use 4G for their home broadband where a fixed line broadband is slower and really? or more expensive. So how will they just tether? To their phones. Uh, well, th th there's th th there's numerous ways that you can do it, and tethering to your phone is one way. So okay. let, let's start on that before we move on to the yeah. other devices, mm -hmm. because um, tethering from a phone is a very very good solution. Yeah, it is. I've used that it's, before. It's it, quite it, helpful. It's very powerful. And the thing about your, your 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 iPhones and your Samsungs and all of these other devices is that they are seven to eight hundred pound units. Yeah. So, yeah. so they have a very good. Um, basis they have a very strong battery and, and all of those other i often about tether when i'm on um, the train yes or even when i am dr somebody's driving next to me in the car mm. or my husband's driving and i need to carry on doing some work i'll be tethering in the car yeah that, and, and and that's that's absolutely fine the reason that we say that tethering isn't always optimal is that your phone gets incredibly hot yeah. while you're using it. Yeah, I've noticed that actually. And uh, let's say for instance, because what we're talking about here is, is, is a 4G signal that will either be a backup. Yeah. So if your fixed line broadband ever goes down, yeah. what do you do at home? You go you, to mobile broadband, yeah. You go to yeah. mobile broadband, you walk to the local coffee shop and work yeah. there for the rest of yeah. the day. But if you have a mobile backup unit, then that's even better than your you, phone. You, you, you can you can do that. Oh great! So in in, in most cases, um, w we would recommend that you get a four G router or a four G hotspot to have a dedicated device to do that because, as we said, your mobile hotspot will get incredibly hot. Yeah. And it will also run down the battery a lot quicker. Than I was going to say, normally. I bet that happens. And. If you are going to use a hotspot, I'll give you one tip that um, 
a lot of people don't seem to know about is that if you are going to use a, a battery then you need to uh, it's a different setting on iPhones and, and, and Android phones and that stuff but you need to set your battery protection on okay because let's say for instance you're tethering and you're going to be tethering for three to four hours that's going to pretty much kill your battery yeah so you think I'll use my lovely USB-C hub that, yeah. that I bought plug it in to, to, to keep my phone charged up yeah constantly keeping your phone at a hundred percent charge is really bad for it is it so what battery protection does is battery protection limits that full charge to 85 percent that's so interesting I didn't know that because every time you fully charge a battery because a battery is just a capacitor the capacity becomes slightly less but if you keep it at eighty-five percent—that's the most efficient sort of um, uh, sort of percentage, the, the most optimal percentage to keep it at for battery life. Great, that's great. I didn't know that. So there's there's a number of things you can do, and Hotspot is great as a temporary sort of mm. solution. Um, but a device would but be a device, better. Well, it, 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 in my honest opinion, a device will be better. I feel like these are the things that people don't know about, and I'm glad that we're talking about it. Because sure. genuinely, I know that nobody really knows about these things. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, apart from it being a hotspot, your phone is a phone, and it still rings. Yeah, of course. So, so, so you, you've got you've got a red hot device because you've been hotspotting for an hour on your that. ear. I hate that. On your ear because uh, because your phone's got so hot, and you're still hotspotting while you're on the call, and that. Battery is just going down and down. So we, we, we recommend either a router, and I've bought the uh, G416 with me today. Mm -hmm. So this is a 4G Wi-Fi 6 mesh solution. Okay. You don't have to have Wi-Fi 6 on your 4G router. You don't have to have mesh. But the beauty of this 416 is for my friend earlier who gets 120 meg down faster than my 80 meg on my fixed line broadband, he can use this as his main connection. Great. And, what, what, and why is this better than a normal router? Uh, well, it's it's not better than a normal router, um, unless the scenario that I just suggested arises. Perfect. So, for instance, in, in in a great four G coverage area, you can get better speeds than than that. Okay. And also, SIM cards nowadays are so much cheaper yeah. than. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So much cheaper than a monthly contract. So, so if you're this takes a, a SIM card. That takes a SIM card. Right. We haven't explained that, and I think that's important to know. Well, so we that's where we're moving on to the advantages of 4G uh, over. Okay. 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 Now. Great. Okay. So explain to me. So how would, how would, how do you use this? Well, you you, you get yourself a, um, a a data SIM. Right. Um, plenty, From anywhere. Plenty of help Any out providers. About. Uh, you can get unlimited SIMs for under twenty pounds. Yeah. And most broadband ISP connections cost about 28 to 30 okay. now for that sort of speed. Okay. There's another advantage. I just put, I just picked it up. So I'm going to take it with me. It's, it's, it's wireless. So I, well, it needs to be plugged Obviously, in. Obviously, to the it power. It needs to be plugged in, but it's portable. Portable. So I can take this and um, Sophie's on her long car ride. She's been it's using genius. her hotspot. She gets to the hotel room yeah. um, that she's in. The Wi-Fi is terrible but I've brought this with me, I'll plug oh it in. Oh my gosh. You get to your cabin in the woods, you plug this in, you use it, you can take it wherever you go. If you do travel a lot, your other option is, um, and I brought with us today, the DWR2101. Um, so this is a 5G hotspot. This is so great. So this is super, super, super fast. Um, so yeah. 5G speeds up to about 1.2 gigabits per second. So we're talking about 120 megabits, we're yeah. talking about 1.2 gigabits. And so look at the size least, of it as at well. Least 10 times it's the absolutely speed. tiny. And, and the, same, Amazing. the same conditions exist <coughs> yeah. as we talked about on here. So for the SIM card, an unlimited 5G data SIM card will still can still cost you less than 20 pounds a month. That's amazing. So you just put the SIM card in and you've got your instant 5G connection. Yes. Which is great because in London, obviously you're getting 5G picked up all the time now, but it's yes. not necessarily everywhere yet. Yeah, as, 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 as a word to the wise, um, I mean, 5G, the last time I checked, was just over covering half of the country. Wow. Um, 5G is much better outdoors still currently. Okay. Um, because we talked about the proliferation of 4G. With 5G, the signal transmission range for 5G is even shorter okay. because it's so much faster. Okay. And 
5G relies a little bit more on line of sight okay. than uh, 4G does. So if your device can see the transmitter, then, 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 yeah. then you'll get better speeds. The beauty of 5G transmitters is they're a lot smaller than 4G ones. So yeah. 4G ones, the big towers, whereas yeah. 5G ones are smaller. So they're going to be easier to pr proliferate across across the country. Are both of these devices speeds. currently available to buy on Amazon at the moment for V-Link? Yeah, they are indeed. And what sort of yes. cost point are we looking at for these kinds of things? Because um, I think this is fantastic. Well, the, the, we, we have two, two devices in this range. This, as I said, is the top of the range Wi-Fi 6 mesh. So it will mesh up your whole home if you wanted yeah. to. Brilliant. This retails up, uh, around at about 150 pounds. God, that's so good. It has a younger brother which doesn't have the mesh. It, it's not Wi-Fi 6. Um, that one retails for a, a more reasonable sort of 70 pounds, which would be absolutely fine. Has most of the uh, same Great. benefits as this one without the mesh. Great. And then th this unit is, is our 5G. So this is top of the range. This would be 350 pounds. But if you're looking for just the 4G version of this, we have two other models, a DWR 932, yeah. which is about 40 to 45 pounds. That's such good value. 4G, and then we have a, a, a bigger brother, a 933 of that, which is a faster version, a Cat, Cat 6 version, um, Wi-Fi AC, which is around at about 90 pounds. So good. something to suit everyone there. That's such a good idea. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just feel like people need to know about that because yeah. it just makes life so much easier when you know that you've got really good Wi-Fi and you've got a backup well, and it's wherever perfect. you go, especially it, for yeah. people who just travel around, That's which it. everybody does now with their hybrid working. Traveling around or just renting. Yeah. Because the lowest um, broadband contract that you'll be able to get is one year. Yeah. If you're renting somewhere for six months. So short term, for short term pro properties, yeah, okay. Save yourself some money and That's just have a, have a 4G connection. That's a very good idea. Thanks, Alan. That is, that's just a no brainer. I love it. No problem. I'm learning so much. So that's about all the tips that we can, uh, we can give to you today. So I hope some of the stuff that we have told you about, we hope you find it useful, helpful. We've been through monitors, accessories, USB, C hubs, desk placement, hotspots, what, hotspots Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi solutions, Wi-Fi black spots. Uh, so much information in there today. If you do have any more questions, follow up in the YouTube comment section below or hit us up over on the dlink.com website. We've got, we've got some lovely people on the live chat over there who can help you out with anything that you've seen in the video today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now. Bye.